Hello everyone and welcome to another exciting episode of The Legal Anchor. Many of you may recognize this very busy thoroughfare that I am standing right off of. It is the Bogwalk Gorge and I'm at Kent District in the Bogwalk Gorge in front of Gorge View Bar. Well, many of you may have been aware that on August 2nd, 2021, the Bogwalk Gorge right here began to experience environmental problems the environmental problems that were being experienced in this very guard was that the fish began dying a substance was seen by the residents an orange reddish substance as they said was seen by them floating down the river and shortly after the fish began dying an investigation is now underway to understand what exactly took place and what the origins of that substances we know that the national planning agency a national environmental planning agency nepa they are the ones that are tasked to oversee our environment so the act states that they are to investigate and also to promote all forms of good disposal practices so they are currently looking into what has occurred in the Bogwalk Gorge to cause the fish to die. We understand that this has been happening. It's not the first time. It has been happening for many times over the years. We hear that there's a court case maybe. There are other things that we have to also be aware of now. And as subsequent episodes, we will begin talking about that. So I will now go over to Michael Leon, who is speaking to the fishermen to fully understand what happened and the situation leading up to the events of that fateful day. Michael? Thank you, Jermaine. All right, guys, my name is Michael Leon. As you, as you know, we're Earth Ambassadors and we specialize in environmentalism. And we're going to talk about the spillage that has taken place in the Rio Cobra. Now, don't mind the background noise. You know, we're, we're close to the door, so you're going to have like trucks and cars passing by. But we're here to speak with some of the fishermen right and how and how this village no, no, had recently no. impacted them okay so now don't mind that one of our fishermen you know he's a, he's, a, he's a businessman as well you know so he gets all these phone calls on a regular basis all right so as i said we're here with one of the fishermen you guys you guys live and work in the area correct yeah, yeah, yeah. you live and work in the area yeah, yeah. right okay so what i want you guys to do is just introduce yourself say what you do you know, and the names are what you guys do. I mean, if you don't mind, just, you know, sharing the microphone and us passing it down. Yeah, yeah. All right, so you are? Paul Weir. Paul Weir, I'm just sorry, can I just give him the microphone? Yeah. So this is Paul Weir. Yeah. So Weir. Yeah. This thing is... Yeah. I think it's on. Yeah. 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 Thompson. Thompson. Yeah, I'm Levi here. I'm running for a new Okay, so let's start from down there. So, Mr. Lewis, what was your experience like when this place had taken place? When did it happen or when did you notice that, that something was off? Um, I saw it on um, Monday. On Monday? Yeah. All right. Monday I come out and I see the water red, frothy on top. And when we look, we see the fish them come up on top, start to kick over. Some of them just start to die. Mm -hmm. and the, the water was red like red like, red, like it had? Yeah, like, 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 like an orange, like an orange-ish red. Yeah, like yeah. an orange-ish red. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And I see fish, everything that uh, come up on top and die. Okay, okay. So, how would you describe the smell? Well, it smells terrible. Terrible. I know we can still smell it somewhat. Yeah, it's still smell it. Yeah. Right, it's still smell it, right? But it's not as, as steam, not yeah. as strong as before. So, I just imagine what it was like before. Yeah. Right. Okay, so then you notice this when? Monday. On Monday. Yeah. Monday. And Tuesday, the whole place started getting stink. Mm -hmm. The fish them died, nobody come and clean them. Clean the river. So everything is piling up and started getting stink. Drop the side, come down. I operate a restaurant and I have to close it because I couldn't get to cook by the whole community. Stink. Okay, so, so, okay, so then, so then, so then, this has not only environmentally affected the air because of the fish die, river polluted, but it also impacted you economically as well to help the CUI, you know, protecting the environment and have 
same manufacturing practices which are in place, correct? Right. To protect right. the livelihood. Okay, so how well is it affected? How well is, how well has it affected you? Big time man. Big time it affected me. Because I remember I didn't rely on my restaurant, you know. Mm -hmm. So just when I get a call somebody asks me to cook. Mm -hmm. I can't cook. Mm -hmm. Because the place stinks and my business is near to the river. Right. So it affect my body, real, real body. Okay. Yeah, real body. Alright, all right. so can we go on the line please? What's the name again, sir? Yeah, I'm Levi Green. Mr. Green, okay, yeah. Mr. Green, I see me. So Monday, Monday we, we, we know the cell river colour started to change and some white substance started to come on top of it. You see the fish then start to move up and down. Some of them are crawl out and, and two of them start to die. Everything dead when you can start to smell a stink, like a, 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 a stink, stinking scent and like a chemical thing, like same way they have a very bad scent. People get sad. Sinus people then start to feel bad. And everything and things so get a big impact and you really see every fish that the whole place of the sting tools and so we say boy I look like a something dangerous one. Right. And it affects me a lot because we set fat and sell swings for the river. Interesting. So, so that stop our our life would right a lot. So where do you where do you guys where do you guys normally set your your, your fish pot? Because it's a your pot in the river. In the river itself. In the river we sell it. Okay, can we see any can you show us where in the river can is it or if you further up the river, we will see these up fish. The back, up the river and down the bank. But you don't okay, really okay. throw them in the river and tie and card them there. Okay, okay. So okay. we don't really go in the river, all the while going in the river. But right, we set right. them and throw them. I have to set those pots. We can't see a ladder. Because you have to buy chicken, but you have to buy coat and feed them up. Right. Put in the pot. mesh wire. Right. Yeah. And things like that. So we lose everything. So all of this was affected by the chemicals. By the chemicals. Right, right. All of it. Because we lose everything. We draw a pot and every fish dying. Okay. The swims die. Everything. So this affects me a lot. And it causes so many people that have trouble with sinus to sick mm -hmm. and cause a big case on the community. So right now we are like some farmer, you know? Assistance. Assistance. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. So so hey, so what we're seeing thus far guys, we're seeing how it has an economic impact because you know, as the gentleman was saying, we're not able to, to run their restaurant. As we're about to start the interview, the, the gentleman here got a phone call, yeah I work on a fish, but he said boy. Yeah, cook. Cannot cook, so it was and it's and it smells. It can it can smell. Away, so it can Just we send the yes, some more for back and it's the same kind of going away. Right, 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 right. right. So it affects the whole community and the world. Everybody feel it. Right. So just from so just from speaking to these two gentlemen here, right, we can see why it's important to protect the environment and to also have proper manufacturing practices to ensure that these kind of spillages do not take place. Okay, so we're seeing why being environmentally conscious is very, very important. But let's, but let's see your phone before the fishermen here. So they can... Oh, sorry, go ahead. This is the third time this happened, you know. This is the third time this happened. Third time. But this time, this time is the worst. Never see. The worst. And were you around for the other, the other, other two times? Yeah. What's another two times? Three right? times. This yeah. is the third time. Right. Well, the first time, I thought we said the fish then. The water get red, sudden, smell bad, and fish start dying. Sudden, like, like somebody wash clothes. Like, yeah, 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 like somebody yeah. wash clothes. Yeah. So this is the third time. The second time, yeah. same thing. Mm -hmm. The second is. time it happened, almost three quarter chop load and dead fish. Take up water. Three quarters. Three quarters. Yeah, I thought of that picture. Yes, like how much how much do you think that is worth? Like like can you put a financial value as to how much that truck load worth of fish worth? That's a yeah, price, can you plenty fish? Hold it up on a fish that's yes, yeah, yeah, fish. Dead fish like nothing. Right, right. I don't see this fish then. Uh-huh. Actually, everything in that hotel. Everything. So one time when we, when we get back fish, we are say, a company in here with Dalgo. Come put back some fish. I don't know two fish. But we gradually start seeing some, some different types of fish. Right, right, right. We right. never seen before. Our original fish are African first. Really? Well, right. 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 about that again. So they, so they came and they put Fish in the river that is not supposed to be in the river, like, well, like fish that, that are not from the area. Yeah, not from the area. They, they, they say, they know that fish will die out, and, and because they know that the fish will die out, and we bring back some fish from the river. 
some different variety of fish. Our fish are more sandy, spurs, and rock fish, and everything we use. Right. But we see all different types of fish. We use different types of variety of fish, and then show the fish. But everything dies now. Uh -huh. Everything dies. Everything dies. Everything dies. Everything dies. Everything dies. So right now, we request back at some fish. We want to do some things. Right. Back some fish on the river. Okay. We still expect them to take a long time. Right. We don't know if it's environmental people are here for response to that. Right, right. Okay, let's hear from the two fishermen here, please, and then we can go and speak to some of the bar owners and they can come give us their experience as well. Um, <laughs> as I said, don't mind the trucks passing by. It's a very busy, busy road, you know, as you hear lots of So, hence, you see why it's important to have proper environmental practices, especially for an area such as this that is so busy, that is so busy and is reliant upon vehicular traffic, reliant upon pedestrian traffic, and people who want to stop by and have a random drink. Somebody, somebody want to come by here and go down to the river. Uh, but you know, I such as the gentleman right here just chilling out, having a drink. So you can see how the spillage will have a negative impact on the environment. But let us hear from this two gentlemen here, please. And so if you were to put if you were to put a financial cost right as to how much this has affected you knowing how much sales you make per day you have an idea yes you just say, boy, I every day, I sell X amount of fish. You're supposed to put it, how much it has costed you. How much you think it has costed you on a per day basis which you have that day with the fish. But this is per day. So then we can say about you know, each day in which you're not allowed to go out and fish, you're losing $15,000. Between $15,000 and $20,000 per day. Per day. Okay, so hence we can, so hence we can quantify, we can put a number to it then, as to how much you're allowed per day, $15,000 per day, which you're not being allowed, right, to carry out your life or to pay for yourself. Okay, yeah. all right, so very, very interesting. Right, can we hear from the last fisherman here, please? And then we know we like to hear from some of the bar owners as well. Okay. Yeah, my name is Paul here. I'm a fisherman in Cameroon. So, in the morning when, when I woke up, I saw some people on the river bank, and it was like, What's wrong with the river? I looked in the water, it was like an orange red, and it was a lot of froth on top of the water. Then about, about half an hour after that, I start getting some headache and I just feel dizzy almost for the whole day because I have um, sinus problem too. And I live very close to the, the river. So even right now to go down to my house, you can smell the stink and fish in my backyard. Uh, we just had a very, very interesting interview with four of the fishermen and they're speaking about their direct impact, or not their direct impact, but how they have been directly impacted by this village in the river. And as you guys were hearing a while ago, they live off of the river. They said that it's your livelihood. And they were able to put an economic value to that. So how much they have lost per day in not being able to live off of the river. 